Across the country, communities are rallying to protect public education. This fight is often focused on stopping the closing and privatizing of public schools. Chicago is home to the country's third largest school district with nearly half a million students. They, along with teachers and parents, organized for months ahead of the Board of Education vote on February 22nd to close 10 so-called failing schools, which serve black and Latino students in some of Chicago's poorest neighborhoods. Communities are fighting these plans because these schools would undergo a controversial practice known as a turnaround. Full control of the schools will be turned over to a private nonprofit company. Teachers, staff, and principals will be fired, and parents and community members elected to their local school councils would be shut out of the decision-making process at those schools. Opposition has taken different forms, including marches, rallies, and even a sit-in at the mayor's office. At schools slated for closure, like Piccolo Elementary, parents work together to create their own plan for improving the school, which includes hiring additional social workers and allowing the current principal, who was hired in July, more time to raise student achievement. They also proposed regular meetings with public school officials and additional instructors and resources. Latrice Watkins, chair of the local school council at Piccolo, organized her community to fight their school's closing. We sent letters, we sent our uh, counter proposal to them months ago to the board and we got ignored. We did a parent vote, we sent it to the board, we got ignored. So we was like, okay, they're not going to respond to us. So we said, we're going to occupy Piccolo to get their attention. They're not going to listen to us then, they're going to listen to us now. So that's the drastic measures we had to take. On Friday, February 17th, 13 parents and activists occupied the school. After taking part in a month and a half long occupation at Chicago's Whittier Elementary in 2010 to secure a library for that school, public school parent Laura Ramirez decided to take part in Piccolo's occupation. We actually were able to get a board member to come to the school, which is unheard of. Board members do not deign themselves to come to the school unless it's a photo op, okay? And on top of that, at Whittier we sat for 43 days, never did we get that response. So I think that that is a huge accomplishment. And the last thing we accomplished is we accomplished to seep into the imagination of people which I think it's the most powerful thing. I do believe that this is going to be the beginning of a lot more occupations like this. One key to the successful occupation at Piccolo were the 100 members of the community and Occupy Chicago who camped out in solidarity. Also supporting the occupation were members of Chicago's teachers union. Unlike most other teacher union locals, since 2010, Chicago's has been led by an activist grassroots wing the Caucus of Rank-and-File Educators, or CORE. They mobilize teachers to work alongside the community to oppose school closures and turnarounds. Public school teacher Sarah Chambers is on CORE's steering committee. We started because we started fighting these turnarounds and closures, so the first members of CORE that joined and started CORE was in response to this. So when they were fighting back against the closures, no one was fighting for them, and even, to be honest, our own union. So we said, what can we do about it? So we brought the community in to fight back, um, to protest these closures, to write the aldermen, to organize. And then at a bigger scale, we, you know, we organize to elect, have our officers elected to the union so we can fight with our 30,000 members and have our community organizers and everyone to fight this massive threat right now. Protests against school closures and turnarounds have been going on for years. Chicago organizer G2 Brown is with the group Kenwood Oakland Community Organization and serves in the school council of Dyed High School, set to be closed this year. Brown says this year he's witnessing an important broadening base of opposition and the mobilization of groups that had not previously worked together. A unity is being forged. People from different, not just, see, usually you would have some unity between some black and brown, but now you've got uh, uh, even stronger black and brown unity. Coco's working with blocks together. Uh, but then you also have parents from middle class white communities that are engaging in this piece. The bottom line is we all love our kids. We all love our children, and we want our children to stand on our shoulders. So I think we're uniting around that. Opponents of school closings weren't just taking on an unelected school board. Despite months of unprecedented actions and the occupation at Piccolo, Chicago's unelected school board unanimously voted to close and turn around all 10 schools on February 22nd. Acknowledging the difficult path ahead, G2 Brown says all options are on the table. 
right. Our message is that this just begins the fight. Right. That's so it. from the legislative yes. end, from the direct action end, all I can tell you is that this just begins it. We will intensify what we're doing. Right. We will take this to Washington, D.C. if we must. Right. We That's will right. visit school systems in other parts of the world that are doing it right and ask America, why are we, why in Chicago, one of the epic centers of this country, are we using an education strategy that has repeatedly failed? Now, the affluent children are doing fine, but in our communities, we are being strangled. And it's not bad teachers, it's not bad parents, it's a sick school system. It's a sick school system. To sit here and stare us in the face and say, you know what's better for us than we do. So that's our position. The Chicago's teachers union and local school councils have filed a lawsuit challenging the closings, and a bill introduced in the Illinois state legislature would place a moratorium on the policy of closing schools. Reporting for Waging Nonviolence, this is Jessel Knorr.